This is Matthew Perry, one of our solutions, <laughs> solutions engineers who's going to talk about analyzing data from our highly reliable transportation system here in New York City. Thank you. Okay. As you've heard a couple times, I'm Matthew Perry. Um, my, uh, my background is in, it's in application development, and I, I like to say most of my good projects have been based on Postgres over the last 15 years, um, and this is, uh, this is also one of them. Closer? Cool. Um, thanks for everybody for coming, by the way. This is um, a great, great weather day to sit inside and talk about our favorite time series database. <laughs> so this use case that I'm going to present is um, based on the MTA bus time um, application. So what, the, uh, what MTA does is uh, publishes their bus location, their vehicle telemetry, uh, through uh, something known as the GTFS, or General Transit Feed Specification. So all this data is available, but it's a snapshot in time, the most current snapshot in time. Uh, we want to do more interesting things. We want to we do animations like this. This is the, um, this is the M line for uh, eight hours of, uh, let's see, last Friday, I think it was. Uh, so just to give you a sense of the you know, complexity of the system, let alone the, the data that we're dealing with. Um, and to answer more interesting questions like historical queries on bus routes, um, geographic queries, where we, where we actually want to, where we actually want to uh, query by geo. Um, and also real-time queries, where we're not looking at historical stuff, but we also want to retain that ability to look at stuff in real time. So this is a story about how we built that. Um, and just to be, thank you. Um, this is an application we started four weeks ago. Um, so this is very much a work in progress. Um, there's a lot of ideas that have been thrown around about where we can take this. And I think we are uh, excited to hear your thoughts on it as well. Um, so this is really the three, three tiers of what we're, what we're building here. A data ingest side. So we are pulling data from the, this GTFS feed that MTA publishes. Um, and that, that ingest has to, be, has to be quick. It has to be reliable. And it has to stay at the in same ingest rate over time. We don't want our database to degrade um, in terms of insert rates. Um, on, the, on the output side, we want to be able to do time series and geospatial queries and, and drive applications for those. We don't necessarily know the questions up front, so we need full flexibility and we need performance. Um, and then the part that, you know, the other part of it, of course, is the data management and the operational side of this. How do we, how do we run this database? How do we keep it running well? So I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to go through kind of these three aspects, sort of three different perspectives on building a system and how time scale can help out in all three cases. Um, and specifically the new features in Timescale 1.2. So Mike went over all of these, um, or most of these, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to go over them in, in detail right now. Uh, you will, I will show you examples of them later. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate some of them. So on the ingest side, one of the things that we always ask people when they're having uh, ingest problems uh, or data, data ingest problems, have you tuned Postgres? Uh, how have you tuned Postgres? And I don't know if, um, how many people have gone in and hand edited Postgres conf, PostgreSQL conf? You know, it's, it's a great experience. Uh, <laughs> no one really wants to do that every time. And there's a lot of things you can get wrong. The performance of your application is really, really highly sensitive to a lot of these things. So what we've done is we, we can take your hardware. You see here I'm on 15 gigs, we're on four CPUs for Postgres 11. Takes your hardware, sort of the best practices from the Postgres community and what we know about time series databases and the specific workload that time series databases entail and tunes your system according to those. So this really takes a lot of the guesswork out of setting it up up front. And that will, that'll actually be shipped with a lot of the distributions of Timescale 1.2. So this is the data model we're using. Um, there's a couple of things to point out here. The most important, of course, is the fact that we're using a hypertable to store the data. Um, that abstraction allows us all the great things that we've talked about. Um, but it's hard to overstate the benefits of some of these other things. Um, we have 
the full availability of Postgres extensions. We have indexes that we can use, a, a whole variety of indexes that we can use. Um, and we have existing tools like uh, the one I used to create that graph over there. To, you know, there's, there's a whole ecosystem of great tooling around Postgres that we can leverage. To actually get the data in, this is something we built just recently. Um, a Python application which takes data from this, uh, this MTA feed, this GTFS feed, and, and inserts it into a hypertable. Now this is, um, this is a demo, so I, I wouldn't uh, put this code into production tomorrow. Um, but if, you want, if you're interested in Python, um, and interested in particularly in how we use PsychoPG, which is a Python driver, to insert data, batch insert data efficiently into Postgres. Um, this might be this might be of interest to you. Also, if you're interested in GTFS as you know in the transit side of things in general, this could be a good application to look at uh, to get some ideas for how to consume feeds like that. Then the big benefit is on the query side. Um, what, what do we get? What kinds of queries can we do? Um, and this is, again, this is when we started this out, we knew we, we had a couple things in mind. We didn't know exactly how we were going to, um, going to do all this. And so it was really important that we had a flexible uh, system for this. So this is where you know, I cross my fingers and hope that the Wi-Fi is working well, because uh, we're going to go into a live demo. Um, I'm just going to jump over. And so those, those original questions that we had talked about at the beginning, um, what is the hourly bus traffic on the M100 route, for instance? Let's just dive into those. I'm going to go switch over to a SQL interface. Can everyone see that OK? Can read that? OK. That? Okay. So the question of, let me get to the right question. Okay, so this, I'm gonna walk through, um, I'm gonna walk through this one in a little more detail than the other ones, just so that we get a little more sense of uh, kind of some of the new features that we're, that we're leveraging here. Um, so the question again is, what is the hourly bus traffic? Um, so we're looking at time bucket gap fill function. This is new in 1.2, and this will, effectively allow us to build a contiguous series of time buckets, um, aggregate to those buckets, but also fill in the gaps where we may have missing data, where the bus, for instance, might not have run at a certain time. We can still get a, cont a contiguous set of time series buckets. So let's run that. So we get uh, oh, I, I should probably go into a few other details about the query as well. Uh, we, we, in the case where we don't have data, we need something to fill in the gaps, right? Um, we should, Mike showed the uh, last observation carried forward. He showed us interpolate. In this case, we're using the coalesce function, which is a Postgres function that just basically says, when we don't have data, put in a zero, because we're counting. Um, and of course, we are searching for route ID. That's going to be important in a second. Most, a, lot of our, a lot of the queries that we've developed for this are an equality check against the route. So we have an index on that table, and we'll show how to make that even more efficient later. Um, so you can see here, you know, midday, we're in the 20s, mid 20s, high 20s of number of buses on the M100 route. Towards the wee hours, we're getting down to zero, but we don't, we, don't skip a, we don't skip a beat. We have a record in the time series here that indicates, yes, we have no buses running at this time. So let's see if that works. Okay. So this, this is another, uh, a variation on that question, which is instead of counting buses, um, you, you might want to ask a question like, how many buses, or wh which buses, are passing by here at a given hour. Um, and so the by here is a, is a spatial query. So let's make sure. So again, it's a, a similar query. So this is just a variation on the one we saw before. We're doing the time bucket, same time buckets as before. Um, this time, instead of counting, we're doing an aggregate array. So we're just sort of building up an array of all of the distinct routes that pass by a certain point. The point being, uh, well, this is for 106th Avenue, the building we're in right now. Um, so this, 
you know, this question could be used to answer questions like, if I stayed here till 11 o'clock at night, could I catch the M55 bus? We're not gonna stay here until 11, but <laughs> party might get good. But, um. So running this, um, there, I'm fudging over a few details here. I'm using uh, uh, lat longs instead of meters, um, but we can talk about those details later. The point is, instead of searching for the route ID specifically, um, we're actually using a spatial query to filter that down. So let's run that. So we see the same sort of um, same sort of result, the, e the, e the even time buckets, and then we also get a, an array of all of the bus routes that are available then. So if you were looking for the M55 in the wee hours of the morning, you probably wouldn't have much luck. It's only the Staten, uh, Staten Island Manhattan Express that goes through, which I'm surprised it even does. But, um, so that's an example of how you can incorporate spatial queries into this. And uh, this one is a little bit more involved of a spatial query. How many buses go off route? Um, and, and it's more of, a, and this is framed as a real time question, but could also be historical as well. Um, you could look at buses going off route over time. Um, let's look at the query. So you notice here there is this route geofences uh, table that we have. That actually, that's a spatial data, um, that's a spatial table that has polygons defining the routes uh, that MTA publishes. So these are theoretically where the buses should be going. Um, and we've, um, I've got some more information on the repo for how I created this table, if you wanna take a look at that. But for now, I think the thing to focus on is, A, we're doing uh, real time, you know, so we're looking at what is in the last 15 minutes. We could also take that query to, to do a time interval in the past. Um, and then the spatial query, uh, using within, to say, is the bus geometry the point within the route geometry, the polygon? Um, so this, this is a really interesting query for things like traffic anomaly detection. You know, so you could actually see when, you know, when your resources are going in or out of a certain like, geofence. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a neat example of that regard. Um, not too interesting just to run and see the, whoops. I'm sorry. That's this, uh, let me try that again. Try it again and it works. See, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the Wi-Fi. No, that actually I think is, is this interface that I'm using, dBeaver, which uh, for, anyway. Um, the, it's not all that interesting to look at it, uh, the query results. So what we wanna see is hook this up to a GIS application. This is where, you know, this is where my background is, is in geospatial information. And uh, so I was, Happy to find um, that this is a, a, an application called QGIS. It's an open source GIS application, full support for post GIS. Uh, um, it has for decades. It's, it's a wonderful application. Um, so just showing how we can pull in time series queries into a framework that a lot of like GIS departments might be interested in. Um, so here we just have, let me zoom out a little bit. Here we have all of the routes that we're interested in. And I have a, a pre-baked query here, which is the same query that we saw before, um, doing that geofencing, and, and it's doing it in real time. So, okay, fingers crossed, it made it. Um, so these are all of the route deviations over the last 15 minutes. So this is hitting the live database. Um, so this, um, there's a couple of really interesting parts of this. One is that you see a lot, a lot of the same routes going off, uh, off route, or a lot of buses going off route at the same time. Um, there's a lot of the same buses that continue to go off route. So it could be, you know, th this could actually be less of a traffic anomaly detection and more of a uh, GIS data quality assessment for the MTA. <laughs> but I think it's as a, as a first cut for doing real time anomaly detection, it's pretty interesting. Uh, let me zoom into one so we can take a look. So I think, so the latency there is mostly the rendering, I'm happy to say. The queries are extremely fast. But yeah, you see the last 15 minutes we have, a, we have the M5 line taking a shortcut here. Um, so that might indicate something going on in its route. Um, and that, and that's, that is really the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to geospatial and time series queries. There is 
I mean, I'm sure everyone in this room has a lot of really good ideas about where we could take this. So I'm really I'm curious to talk to everyone afterwards and really want to get a sense for where you think we could take it. Um, whoops. Sorry about that. All right. So the third, the third aspect and the third um, perspective that we want to sort of give here is the, that of the data management side. Uh, Mike had mentioned the data reordering. Um, I'm not going to reiterate all the details of it other than to say, other than to show you a success story that we had. Um, recall we, I talked about we had an index on the route ID because we knew we were making a lot of these route ID equality checks. Um, even with the index, it's not that, it, you know, the, the performance looking at all of the routes, and this was a week ago, uh, looking at all of the routes was about 12 seconds and touched about 20,000 blocks on disk, which means that's a lot of I.O. Um, reordering these chunks according to the route index allowed all of those records to be stored on two orders magnitude less blocks on disk. So, we, I mean, we were hitting 250 blocks and three milliseconds, uh, so 3,000 times speed increase um, just by reordering this. I think the really, Im the really impressive thing, and it's hard to show on this, is that I was able to, while we were doing this, maintain the same insert rate um, and also do other queries at the same time. So we're not, we're not doing a full table lock like you would see with a Postgres cluster, for instance. This is, this is all done in the background and can be actually done on a live system which is pretty unique, I think. And of course, we don't want to have to do that manually every single time we get a new chunk, especially if we have chunks coming in every day or every hour. So we, we have this uh, feature in 1.2 where we can add policies, say, and this will actually go and reorder that stuff in the background so we can have those performing queries without having to manually do that. And then finally, the other, you know, the other thing that Mike mentioned that's really been helpful in this application is being able to set a data policy. Um, as this is a demo, we didn't buy huge disks for it. Um, so we've got, you know, we have a limited amount of disk space. By knowing how much data we have coming in, um, we can sort of estimate what we want our storage requirements to be and be very explicit about it. We're storing 26 weeks of data. We know we have roughly, unless MTA doubles the number of buses on the road, we know we have roughly the storage capacity to handle that. So being able to have that explicit storage is really nice. So that's, uh, that's what I've got. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, this, I think why I wanted to emphasize really that it's, it's more than just the database. It's this whole solution around it. And um, I, I think the engineering challenges of doing the data ingest, of doing uh, the data management in general, and doing the application development, building performant queries, all three of those perspectives are really, um, you really get a lot out of timescale, uh, and timescale really helps you in the, all three of those areas. Uh, and also, we're, we're just touching the surface of how to do geospatial and time series queries, um, and I would love to hear more thoughts on, uh, on that from everyone who's doing similar things. So, yeah, thank you. Does anybody have any questions before I get on?